there was a lot of talk over the last few months here about maybe EVs were falling out of favor, not just Tesla, but overall. We heard from John McNeil yesterday on this very program, who formerly worked for Tesla, formerly worked for Lyft, formerly worked for Cruise, saying that EVs are still being embraced by customers, and at least based on the results we saw out of Tesla today, that seems to be the case. That, that's exactly right. We saw Tesla return to growth with deliveries, and we see, we see Tesla is ramping up its new vehicles. So the Cybertruck is going to be ramping up production, and Tesla is still on track to deliver the new, more affordable vehicle in uh, in the early part of next year. And then we got a positive announcement from GM yesterday saying that they are still bullish on, on EVs and that they will be producing them and think they can make them profitable. So, you know, I think what we saw is a, is a temporary slowdown in EV growth, but generally EVs are still growing and consumer demand is still there. The company Tesla saying that it is on track to open that mega factory over there in Shanghai. And to your point, Seth, on the EV side, particularly on a more affordable EV, they are saying that they plan to launch those affordable models in the first half of 2025. And I want to get your thoughts on this because this has been a big bugaboo. And I think a big reason why a lot of investors started to sour on the EV trade is that a lot of these vehicles were just out of the reach for a lot of folks. Great if you had 100 grand to spend, but if you didn't have that to spend, you pretty much had to go hybrid or even gas. Is that going to change in a meaningful way next year? I believe so. I think with Tesla, GM, Ford, and Hyundai all launching new, more affordable vehicle models that will likely come in below the average selling price in the mid forty thousand of new of new autos in the U.S., then I think we're going to see more consumer demand. Where you have interest rates also coming down, so the monthly payment to consumers is more in reach for the majority of consumers who are in the affordable vehicle market. Historically, EVs have been a luxury vehicle, but as we see more new models at a lower price point combined with lower interest rates, we're going to see more of that affordable vehicle demand in things like the, the full-size sedan market. So think of like the Toyota Camry or something like the uh, the SUV, the midsize SUV, something like a Honda Sierra Vios Toyota RAV4. All of a sudden, we're going to see EVs in these markets where we have not really seen those before at an adequate range or with the technology that consumers demand. Another reason why the stock is moving higher in after hours trading is the profitability metrics, right? The gross margin, automotive gross, gross margin, when you back out the regulatory credit, uh, came in at 17.1%. Seth, analysts were looking for something in the neighborhood of 14.9%. How sustainable is this? I, I think it's very sustainable. Remember, we, we had Tesla having multiple headwinds that led to the temporary decline in gross margins for the first half of the year. They were ramping up the Cybertruck. That was still not profitable from a gross margin standpoint. Now we're at break even, likely turning profitable in the coming quarters. We had higher raw materials costs that were still flowing through, and their raw materials costs have been declining. And then we had declining deliveries, meaning higher fixed costs per car included. As Tesla is lowering their costs and as they stop slashing prices like they did last year we're seeing gross margins start to rebound and, and it makes a lot of sense that this is going to be the trend for tesla going forward mm. meaning that the first half was likely the bottom and i mentioned the gross margin x regulatory credit we should mention as well that tesla trolled the other car makers for being behind on meeting emissions requirements uh, in fact tesla uh, notched its second highest quarter of regulatory credit revenue uh, the number was 739 million dollars for the quarter. Have investors underestimated that as a source of revenue strength for Tesla? Well, it certainly helps and it helps drive positive free cash flow and allows Tesla to maintain a very strong balance sheet with a strong cash net cash position. And so I do think Tesla will likely still see regulatory credit revenue for the next several years at least uh, as other automakers still have to buy credits to, to meet their standards. I am curious, Seth, uh, going forward, when we talk about the broadening out of the EV space beyond just Teslas, I mean, for a while, that was the only really viable EV that you can buy. That changed in a big way over the last couple of years. But we've seen a little reticence by some of the legacy automakers about how much they want to keep investing in this and how fast they want to go. Are you confident in the commitment that GM, Ford, and I guess to a smaller extent, some of the uh, Japanese and Korean automakers might have in really pushing deeper into the electric vehicle space? I, I think so. I just think it's not going to be as instant as we're seeing in, say, say Chinese automakers that have been pivoting very quickly 
and going all in on electric vehicles. I think your companies like Ford and GM are taking a step back and wanting to make sure that these vehicles can be profitable and that they're not going to end up having to take out a lot of debt because they're selling unprofitable vehicles when they want to make sure that consumer demand is there, meaning they need to hit the lower price point. You know, just serving the luxury vehicle, we've seen EVs become somewhat saturated. So I think Ford and GM are smartly looking at this and saying, we're going to serve the market, but only when the costs uh, make, make these vehicles profitable for us to do so. And I think that will happen in the next couple of years. You know, I'm looking at the share price right now, and even with this big boost up, um, it's still not back to the levels it was before RoboTaxi Day on October 10th, when Tesla uh, didn't quite deliver on the details. Seth, what will you be listening for on the conference call today? I mean, it probably won't be more detail on RoboTaxi because they would have told us already on October 10th. Yes, yes, exactly. I would be looking for more detail on the full self-driving because to get to robo-taxis, we need to start where we are today, which is the full self-driving supervised. At the robo-taxi day, Tesla did say for Texas and California, they plan to launch the unsupervised full self-driving software next year. And so I want to hear more about what adoption metrics look like in those markets. I want to see more about what their plan is for FSD miles how that's going to be training if if the JoJo supercomputer is taken over because that would lead to faster AI training and a faster improvement on the FSD product that would ultimately potentially get you a robo-taxi version. But I'm hoping to hear more details, uh, not just the timeline since Elon Musk set a 2026 timeline for robo-taxis then joked that he's bad at setting timelines.